What's going on everyone? Blade55555 here and today I'm going to be presenting an interesting topic into Age of Empires 4 that I don't think has really been discussed and that would be managing your economy. This is arguably one of the most, if not the most important thing you can learn to do in Age of Empires 4 because managing your economy is how you produce your units tech up, get your upgrades, you know, all of that stuff. And it requires more skill than you would think, because even at the highest level of play, the best players in the world make mistakes managing their economy because it, there's just so much to do in the game. Um, for those who want to know what I want to talk about, we're going to talk about managing your economy pretty much, which I guess I just said, and we're going to go over how to best do so. The general concepts when managing your economy are simple things to start out, right? When to go to it, to the feudal age, you need to put the general build order for a lot of civs, seven to eight villagers on food, two, three to four on gold, and then you start putting on putting some villagers to wood so you can make houses or, you know, <clears throat> make a military building by the time you hit the feudal age. That's an example of the very basic concept of economic management in Age of Empires IV. When you get to the feudal age, that's when it gets more complex. Do you want to go for a second PC? Then you need to put villagers on stone, much like we see here. Do you want to go fast castle? Then you need to put a lot more villagers on food, less on wood, none on stone, and then a few more on gold so you can get that castle age faster. Do you want to do a feudal age aggression? Well, then that's even more that you have to do, right? You have to put a certain amount on food, certain amount on wood, some gold, because you typically want to get your blacksmith upgrades, and then you need to be able to produce houses, and then you need to get your military productions, and then you need to be able to support making units out of those military buildings while managing your economy, you know, because you still want to be constantly making villagers. Uh, that kind of stuff is what we're going to be going over. Um, and one of the very first things I want to discuss is what a lot of lower players do and make mistakes at, and again, even pro levels make this mistake. And we're gonna kind of go over simple ways that you should try to fix them or focus on rather than ignoring it until you know your resources get too high. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about and one of the main things I wanna talk about that a lot of players do is they float a lot of wood. And what happens is when players get to this point in the game where they're floating a thousand wood, 900 wood, what they tend to do is either spam out more military production buildings, which isn't necessarily the wrong decision. I just want to sp uh, put that out there. Or they'll make a ton of houses or they just ignore it until they run out of food and go, oh, wait, I need to start making farms. Um, Generally what you want to do with wood, because this is the most common resource you're going to see floating early on in a game compared to other, you know, resources. Like you're always going to float resources to some degree, as I've said, even at the highest level, you see people float a ton of gold, food, wood. It's impossible even for the best players in the world to manage this perfectly. But a general tip of advice I like to give the players when getting to this portion is when you're floating wood and you don't know exactly what to do with it, throw down some farms. Now you might be asking, Blade, why would I throw down farms? I have all these berries, I have sheep, I still have deer, and then there's a deer pack over here, there's berries over here, there's some boars. Why would I do that and throw down some farms when I can wait till later? And the reason why is to stop the point in the game, which every player has experienced at some point or another, when you run out of food sources on the map and you need to do the farm transition. If you think about it, when you run out of all the food sources on the map, if you have not made a single farm, you have zero food per minute incoming until you make farms. That means, you know, it takes, how long does it take to make a farm? It takes six seconds. That may not sound like a long time, but if you have to make 15 farms and you're not typically having one villager in each farm individually because it's, they like to build them all one by one when you shift click, you're probably spending a minute or so spamming down the farms, then the villagers have to gather the farm, and then they drop off the food. So you're probably going 30 to 60 seconds with zero food while you're waiting for your villagers to gather off farms. The very first thing I'd recommend is throwing down, don't spend all your wood on farms necessarily, but throw down, you know, five farms here, five farms there, and just kind of, you know, continuously add them on as the game goes on rather than go, I have zero on food because I've ran out of food sources. Here comes 30 farms. 
This will make it so that when you do need to do a farm transition, when all the food source, natural food sources are gone, instead of panic making 30 plus farms, you can already have 15 to 20, for example, be like, okay, I still got a solid food income. Let's say you're attacking your opponent. Let's say, let's look at this attack here as just an example. Let's pretend this is a close battle and all we win the fight. We have like seven units left over, but we can't add reinforcements because we've don't have the food anymore. We used all our, the natural food sources. We don't have farms, so we can't add reinforcements. The opponent kills your army and then is able to counterattack as you're waiting for your food sources to come in. It's just a very basic example, but it has happened to you before, assuming you play the game at a 1v1 level or even team games, you've probably experienced it at some point or another. That's why it's super important to spend your wood on that on adding in small farm transitions at a time like i said before even at the pro level you see that you see them not doing this because it is impossible to do every time and because there's so much to do now i want to go over the next resource type that is very common for players to float early on in a game and that is gold you will notice in this game again as an example we have 2.1k gold at 15 minutes into the game in feudal age this is a very common thing that happens again even at the pro level you will see players float gold but we're going to notice something that we're missing here we don't have a market when you're floating gold and you don't know what to do with it and you have 26 villagers on gold for starters take some villagers off gold it's never a bad thing to to move villagers to another resource. This is another common tactic in Age of Empires that if you're not familiar with it, it's something that you just have to practice. There are times where you're gonna to have too much on wood, you're gonna take some off wood, put them on food, gold, stone, whatever you wanna do. And on gold, it's the same thing. Sometimes you're just gathering way too much gold that you don't need. You could put these onto food, wood, stone, you know, whatever you need. But the next thing you want to do, specifically with almost any resource in the game, if you're floating too much, is you want to have a market. The market is one of the most important buildings in Age of Empires because you can use it to fix economic imbalances. Look at this. We have 2100 gold, right? Let's say we need, we want to go Castle Age. We could buy, you know, three, 400, 500 food real quick and get to Castle Age much quicker than waiting for 13 villagers to gather the 1,200 food required. On the other side, let's say you don't have gold and you want to get some upgrades, but you have 3,000 food, 4,000 wood. You can sell the excess resources to get that gold to get those upgrades. Um, it's just a very crucial way to manage your economy and it is something that you see you'll see every player do well every high level player do is they usually throw down a market at some point in a long game because like i said nobody can manage it perfectly and it's just really good to be able to spend that gold on resources you need let's pretend we wanted to do we needed some stables you can buy a few hundred wood let's say we want more farms because hey we ran out of food but we don't have the wood to throw down as many farms as we were like buy four to five hundred wood and make those as farms there's so many things you can do with the market that it is a that's why it's very necessary to have especially when you start floating a lot of resources um, as gold generally you'll use it to buy resources you need when you float gold because i mean there's not much else you can't sell gold to buy gold right because you have the gold already that's not how that works but it's just an example, um, and that is why when you start floating a lot of gold, generally one of the first buildings you want to start getting is a market so you can even that out and move on to whatever you need to do in the game. All right, so I'm going to show a brief example here of, of something like a mistake that was made in this game, um, but it's one I'm going to show uh, a, a higher level player what they do just so I can kind of show you in action. So I want to point out this game and specifically at this mark, you'll notice that uh, our player here is floating 3,839 food and 4,565 gold. Now, other than going Imperial Age, a general thing here is what are we lacking with this many resources? I'll give you two seconds. You can pause it if you want longer to think of what I think um, a Nami here is making a mistake of that they could have done by either again, they can buy some wood for this. So that's a hint. And let's just, I'm just gonna tell you now, more production buildings. 
When you start floating a lot of food and gold, one of the most important things you want to do when you see this is build more production buildings. This is advice I give to players all the time when asked or when I do uh, viewer replays on my channel. Because one of the important things of managing your economy is spending your economy. We're floating a ton of food here and a ton of gold that we don't have as much wood, but that's just because we're transferring to a new wood line. So that'll change shortly. But <clears throat> look at how many uh, buildings we have. We have five archery ranges, four barracks, two stables, and that's it. We're not seeing any other production buildings anywhere. Now this might seem like a lot depending on how you think of it, but this, for the amount of resources we're floating, it is not much at all. Because think about it. Let's say we're gonna keep making these, uh, an archer. It takes 11 seconds to make an archer. With five archer ranges, you're making five archers in 11 seconds. But we can produce a lot more than that. Let's let's go crossbow since we technically don't have the wood at this, at what I'm showing here. 80 food, 40 gold, 16 seconds. So every 16 seconds, we're making five crossbows, but we have this many resources. Let's pretend our whole army gets wiped out right here. Oh, not right there. I'm not sure where our army is. I guess it's all at home, which actually kind of serves the point even more. Notice how we have all these units here, but look how long it's taking us to remax out. We should be maxed out the second or within seconds of making of losing units because you have such a when you're floating this many resources your goal should be to max out instantly if you cannot max out instantly general rule of thumb make more production buildings another way let's pretend we're in an earlier age and you're doing this if you have three archery ranges and you're floating resources and you're you're able to queue multiple units in one let's say you're doing two archers in here three in here two in here every cycle add another archery range whenever you can't spend your resources fast enough or the units aren't coming out fast enough to your resources add more production just a general advice that you want to do is always look at that just always look and go hey for some reason i can make I, i'm making six units at a time but i only have three archery ranges add three more because if you can afford it, you need to do so. It will help you so much. And will, and depending on your skill level, it can cause you to do a huge spike if you get that, that down, which is not easy to do. It sounds easy, but when there's so much going on, you know, right? Hey, you're getting raided here. Hey, you're being attacked here. Uh, you need to make villagers. Oh, you're running out of food. You need to do this. I mean, when there's so much to do in the game, it's very hard to do. But it is something I would really recommend you focus on is adding more production. Because imagine if we did at this point in the game, we could be remaxed. We could be selecting all these units, attack move in one direction, have a huge queue behind us so that the moment a unit dies, bam, a new one comes and we're counterattacking. And now I am going to show this in a high level game here in just a second. All right, so we're going to kind of speed through this, but I just want to show you guys what I'm talking about when it comes to adding more production buildings and which is a part of managing your economy, believe it or not. Um, so as we can see here, Marine Lord, who we all know is arguably the best player in the game, uh, or at least one of them, we see that he has three archery ranges three in production because he was floating wood and he has a lot of food so he can clearly build we know what 1000 food a minute and 700 food per minute or 1000 wood per minute and then 700 food per minute we know that you can make more than three archers at a time right we also know that we can produce more than two hardened spearmen with three archery ranges like easy this is nothing with our economy at this moment so you see when marine lord recognized this fact he throws down three more archery ranges because he knows he needs to be able to produce more units and we're just going to kind of like i said speed through this a little bit And we're going to see, we're going to start, again, floating resources. Is, I just want to always reemphasize that. I think this is the third time in the video that you're going to float resources no matter who you are, no matter how good of a player you are, because there's only there's just too much going on. And it's impossible to not float resources, especially once you get, you know, when you're at 90 villagers, you're going to float something. It's going to be food, wood, or gold. You very rarely have all three completely balanced the entire game. But we're just going to kind of skip forward here. And I mean, it just kind of comes to go down the point, right? Look at this. We even Marine Lord, again, arguably one of the best players in the game, is floating 1300 wood right now. He could throw down some farms. He could throw down some, some more production buildings if he wanted to. There's a lot of things he could do with the wood. But again, it's just a common mistake. I just want to point out that 
everyone does it. But you'll also notice that he's keeping his food for the most part low because he's spending he's making a bunch of camel archers. You could probably throw down a few more archery ranges to produce more, but again, just uh, a bunch going on here. But then you will notice he is kind of pulled some wood villagers off to gather more food. He was at like 56. Obviously, there's a raids and stuff, which can make it hard to prove my point sometimes. But it just goes to show that. Um, but see, even here, we see that Marine Lord's starting to drop down a farm, even though there's all this food on the map, right? We see this. It's only one farm. It's not very many. He didn't throw down five. He didn't throw down ten. He could easily afford to do so, but he does have also a lot of map control to kind of keep making, you know, get the shoreline fish, the deer, the berries. But you'll see he still threw one down. Probably because he didn't know what to do with the villager, to be honest, but that's that's another point. But again, and then you see we're floating a lot of resources, throwing down a bunch of stables. Because at, po at some point in the game, you want to start spamming, you know, horsemen. Horsemen right now, for those unaware, are one of the best units in the game to spam down. Um, they're really cheap once you have a food economy going. When you're making, when you're getting 3,000 food per minute, you can sustain a lot of stables. Um, and this just allows you to raid and do all that stuff. But that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is just going over spending the resources. Again, we got seven stables. You'll notice we're making, you know, just more stuff here and there. And then, yeah, I don't think there's probably too much else I really want to go over on this one. This probably was a, was a bad example, so I might. Uh, so I am going to show another one here because, again, it's just one of those games where it, there's too much natural food sources to where farms are just very, very late. But I just want to keep pointing out that you'll notice that as Marine Lord floats more and more resources, we're throwing down nine barracks, a couple markets here, I'm guessing to trade. And then, and this is just because that way, every time he loses a unit, bam, he remaxes instantly. It's the whole point of doing this kind of stuff. And that's really one of what I wanted to show here for players who don't really do this, is why production buildings, the later the game goes, is just so important. You're going to notice that Marine Lord is always maxed at this point. He's, he's floating a ton of resources, but he's also almost consistently maxed, except if he's microing or something and not paying as much of attention. But even though he did it for a second, he was pretty much maxed again. Until he's, you know, low on resources, just repeatedly, repeatedly, and then he keeps fighting. And as he keeps fighting, more and more units in the queue. But he obviously lost all his food resources. Oh, I really wish I had kept that. But anyway, as you saw, that was actually an example of what's what happens when you don't. Um, I didn't mean to skip that far ahead. I'm at the stop, but I kind of forgot, and I'm... Not going to re-record this section. A little unprofessional, but whatever. Um, but as you saw there towards the end of that, if you caught, if you're paying attention, is he started spamming down all his farms because he started running out of food sources and he did it all at once. Just wanted to show that that even the best players in the world make that mistake, even though he should have been sprinkling them in the entire game. It would have helped that food transition where he went from 3,000 food per minute to where he dropped down to only 13 on food or whatever it was at the end there. All right, there's really not that much really else to show off because there's just a lot of, like when it comes to managing your your eco, there's just, every game is different, right? You can't just, I can't tell you, for example, hey, at 13 minutes in the game, you need to throw down six farms or at 25 minutes in the game, you need to throw down 10 farms, three barracks, two archery ranges and five stables or something because that's just not how the games work. Every game is different and it's all situational. In general, the more you kind of get in the habit of moving re units like villagers to different resources that you need, the the more you'll get that feel, um, like that hidden sense where you're like, oh, wait, OK, I need to move these villagers to food now because I need the food or I need the wood or I need the gold or, you know, whatever you need. I just want to point out in this game, this is kind of an example, the closest I can get that I could find where I was floating wood and I threw down four farms, even though we still have a boar here. We still have. Uh, I'm not sure where the second boar is. Oh, I think I just took it. Um, but we still have food here. I still have food sources. We see we have berries, yet I still chose to throw down some farms because I was floating like 600 wood. Again, it's just good to kind of throw that kind of thing down just as an example because you're always going to float resources. And when you float a lot of wood, it's just generally a good idea to start mixing in so you don't completely lose out of food when that happens. 
there's not really too much else to go over. Um, if you have any questions, again, feel free to ask in the YouTube comments below. Feel free to uh, come to my Discord. Um, it's exclamation Discord on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv, blade55555. And in general, that's uh, it. If Hopefully this helps you into some degree on managing your economy. Um, I'm not sure if I went into enough detail or not, but I went over what I, the best I could think of. So thanks again, and I will see you in the next one.